I'm going to bring the Dunbar Board of Selectmen meeting to order. All three selectmen are present. Our town administrator is here, and uh, Leo is tape recording for the benefit of the public, and Linda Nickerson will upload those to the town website and YouTube. Um, I've got some more business here. I'll make a motion to approve the 7 p.m. regular minutes of November 4th as amended. Second. Motion to remain second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. You two are on the agenda. Any public comment, Leo? Board of Accessors, uh, Accessors, Accessors, right? Mary the Valley Cheer is here uh, to talk about our 2022 budget. Okay. Yep, ready to go. Okay, our budget is pretty standard from year to year. And we have an increase of about $86 this year because we got a 3% raise. Thank you, my gentleman. Okay. <laughs> but the secretary, we have got a raise, the board itself got a raise. Then we have our regular appraisal services, which we usually put 10000 aside for. Utility appraisal, the same. And then the computer support is from Vision. And their contract lines from July from July to June. So if we put 10000 in there, but we're only using so much of it so far. That's the last item here. Okay. That's pretty much our budget. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is. Well, that's nice. Thank you very much, Mary, for coming in. Reviewing that with us. Being first on the list, we'll make sure you get your money first. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just a joke. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Section, but we can break it down. Okay. Yep. Yep. And you have one more. 
for you tonight? Maybe? I do. Do you want to go over that? I'm, um, Brett, did you want a copy of any of these? I do have copies up here. Oh, no, thanks. thanks. Okay. Thank you. I met with um, Gemma Lee, the Deputy Welfare Director. She had um, reviewed these numbers with the Welfare Director. Um, it's pretty much a flat budget, except for the 3% raise. Um, Salvation Army, the board has set that the same for the last few years, community action. I received their request for um, the 2022 budget, which is flat. And then the overseer of welfare covers both payroll, the, or the welfare director and the deputy, which is the 3%. And then direct assistance vendor, they don't have a whole lot of need for that line, knock on wood, but they do have a lot of resources that reach out to. Um, community actions one, um, the Salvation Army is another, the food pantry, so they typically will use all the resources that they can before they tap into um, their budgets. And just to remind the board, this has kind of been a flat budget from year to year, the 5,000 for the last few years, but in the past it has been over $30,000. So in the event there is a, a, a special need where this, that changes, even if we don't have it in the budget, the town's obligated to cover those costs if there's a need for uh, the welfare assistance. But they, they feel that that number for now is, is adequate. And I did see we gave the $500 for the church pantry last week. You did, yep. Okay. Any questions on that budget? Back to uh, Brett St. Clair, the Conservation Commission Chairman, and five, rep five members of Representative Allison Schreiner. Schreiner. And this is on the Kerber Conservation Easement. And so, Five Rivers has been working on this for quite a while and uh, it's coming to fruition next week, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a go, right? Yes. Yeah, so Allison's here to ask you. Uh, folks to sign the easement um, deed and to also answer any questions that you might have. Um, well, Allison, uh, Nate sent it to us yesterday afternoon and I spent last night reading it. Read all 39 pages or so. Um, a lot of repetitive things in there, but it looked like everything was covered for all the parties involved. So. And I even learned that Dunburn, the town of Dunburn becomes the default overseer, uh, yes. if conservator, if you guys uh, default somehow. Yes, yes, there's uh, several funders, so um, the town of Dunbarton has a secondary executory interest yes. in the easements, yes. So yeah, and they wanted to know what the chances were that Five Rivers would go belly up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I said we didn't really know it. question there's a lot of signatures on here that aren't ours we're just saying that one page 28 with the selectman signatures correct that's correct okay do you have a copy that we need them to sign um no they can sign you can sign any copy we have one that's all flagged here that we can give you after we sign that's it. fantastic Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited that this is my own. Uh, 
not sure what was it a couple of years ago you guys were in here talking about it with the school and That's right. access to it and stuff. Yeah, that was like April or May of 2019, so it's yeah. been a little while. The parking area up there, um, Five Rivers going to work on that? So it's built into the Especially now that the lane has been cleared over there, it's a little bit more uh, acceptable. You're not going into trees there, you know. So. Yeah. So I'll talk to the, you know, Doug Martin PD and, you know, just so we can assure them that, you know, there won't be a safety yeah. problem or something like that. I think it, I think they'll see that it, it probably makes a lot of sense. And it's a, it would be a good benefit for the school because then the kids could access the property. Can someone else witnesses? on that one page that I can see okay. on the contract box. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Bob has more too because he has the first yeah. half. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you guys very much. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.
Chris, was this the same type of contract we did in the past, or is that brand new? It is. So this is our our third three-year contract yeah. that we'll be entering into. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to explain real quickly for the board. Um, there is a, a cost increase um, related to IT support and server costs for our in-car computers that the town of Goffstown was actually previously absorbing and essentially paying for out of their own pocket. So rightfully so, they've passed that cost on to us. Um, so it, really the big thing is I want to put this spreadsheet together so the board could see that even in contract year 2024, we'll still be paying less than we were in 2014 when we were with the town of Bow. Um, so I think it's still a very good deal. Um, the town of Goffstown has been great for dispatching and IT support, uh, particularly with our in-car computers, because um, there's a lot of technicalities that, that come with those, and they've given us access to their mobile IT support so we can log in through a portal, create a ticket, and uh, they can remote right into our computer and fix whatever the problem is. So I just wanted the board to be able to see the numbers and how they've kind of transpired over the years. I did see that. I didn't realize what it was for, so I'm glad you came in and explained that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and like I said, they've they've graciously been absorbing those costs uh, for a couple years now. Um, but obviously, what's right is right. We need to pass those costs uh, costs off to us. When does the contract begin? The contract would begin uh, January 1st, okay. and it would be valid through uh, December 31st. So this would just be added to your budget line, then? It's already, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's in my budget proposal. Um, Again, this is this would be the third three-year contract we've been with Goffstown since uh, 2016. Yeah. And support's been yeah, you said no problems. With no, no, their IT's been really. It, they've gone above and beyond on multiple times for us, and, and dispatch itself is really great. Um, we have our dedicated in-house line over there, the two two four one two three two. So if someone calls that number twenty four seven, the live dispatcher picks it up. Um, they handle. Our calls, it is, uh, if someone calls the police station after five rings, if we're not in the building, it automatically transfers over to Golf Sound Dispatch. So from a customer service standpoint, it's uh, it's a really they good They don't get a ringing phone, they get someone to call. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And it just works really well. And, um, if it's working good for you and it's cheaper, I think it's a win-win. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Thank you. 2015, Bull was up to 28. Right. You can see what they were today. Right. Yeah, they, and their dispatch center disbanded uh, in 2015, or around 2016, some, somewhere there. So they're contracting service elsewhere too. They're they're with Merrimack County Dispatch. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I believe that increase you see from 2014 to 2015 was kind of the catalyst for the town, uh, you know, trying to get bids for dispatch services, and they ultimately went with Golf Sound, and we've been with them ever since. So, and the other thing too is um, if you need backup, they're kind of involved right there for me. Absolutely, we're right on Golf Sound's frequency, so us and Golf Sound officers uh, work together hand in hand quite a bit. The other thing is we have the automated vehicle locators in our cruisers, so they can log in uh, through their computers and dispatch and see precisely where we are. We have a lot of radio dead spots in town, so God forbid if, if an officer was in trouble, um, dispatch would at least be able to see where the officer's car is. Um, so there's a lot of integration um, and a lot of teamwork and partnership that we have with them. So. I would respectfully request that the board support the three-year contract. I see all kinds of signs for witnesses. Uh, looks like we'll sign here with his three signatures. And he'll take our copy to the board of selectmen in Goffstown. Uh, oh, okay. Sign there. I'll send that to Chief Sumino, and he'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the rest of that night, the first two pages. That's the one I thought you saw. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. 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 It probably wouldn't hurt to make a motion. Um, Bob, why do you sign that? I'll make a motion for the lease before I appreciate that. Dunbar Police Department to continue services with the IT support and dispatch services with the call stop. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much for the board support. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll get a couple other things from me in our mailbox. More or less, you guys. Oh, outstanding. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll stick around in case there's any questions. Trying to make it quick tonight at Patriots. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> I can give a scan comfortable level sound. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll mail the original of the cheat server and I'll scan any emails. So I hate it here. Right. And I left that blank and they can just do yeah. that with their board. Thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Anything else you have for us? No, I'm all set. Thank you very much. I'll hang around in case there's any questions about uh, the uh, tuition reimbursement requests. Okay, that being said, I'm going to hop over to okay. mailbox items. Okay, first thing on the agenda is we have a request from the building administrator um, from the chair of the ZBA to appoint Derek Branch as an alternate to the ZBA. It's a three-year term. Um, so I asked for a letter um, from the uh, from chairman, and we have that letter here. And we also have a, uh, I have the appointment paperwork here. So I'll make the appointment, I guess, I've had it here. Make a motion to appoint Derek Branch of Dunbarton in the County of Merrimack to the Zoning Board of Adjustments in said town of Dunbarton, term ending March 2024. Um, it says down here, I just want to make a note that he's going to be a alternate member. Motion is made. Second. Second motion is made. Second, all in favor? here from Mary Gerard from the library in reference to snow fence and raid guard near the entrance of the library has been installed. Greg Miller also inspected the removed set of lights from the ceiling of the bandstand. He said he feels that they're entering along the electrical wiring where help repellent has been placed inside the ceiling area. We have an email here from the um, transfer station supervisor, Lee Bohm, Patrick Bohm, and uh, it's just stating that it's an extra busy week. Uh, he is shorthanded down there. He's got eight to ten hours extra of overtime um, this week again. Uh, he does state that uh, Eddie, who's our previous assistant manager, looks like he may be coming out uh, down work for us just after um, Thanksgiving shut down. So that would be good because I'd like to try and alleviate the overtime on that department if we can get that down within reason. I concur on that, but I want to be rest assured that the other two part-timers can get up to 40 hours a week in, in, during this interim, and they should be working 40 hours a week. If they're not, why are we paying overtime? It's, it's less expensive to pay them 40 hours than it is to uh, pay some overtime like that. So I do know that I'm, I'm not on this week, Mike, but on a previous week. He said that he gave them all the hours that they would take. Okay. So um, not, that's nothing new, but it was the last emails we had. And at this point, I, I, I think the overtime, I, I think it's, uh, you know, he should, he's mailing us the, uh, the updates. I think he should pull a, a chain of command. I think uh, his, the supervisor should be involved with the overtime supervision. And that's Lee. I think we did ask him at the meeting to CCR. Is he doing that? Just recently, yeah. Okay, and I, I feel rest assured. All right, but I do think uh, I, that's we should go to lean with selectman CC. Yeah. Okay, that's where it should be. But uh, could you remind them that you know those those part time workers during this interim time, for they can work up to forty hours and then some, because it's only for a short duration. Yeah. I think the police department educated me on that years ago. Okay, we've got 
get another email from the sand transfer station uh, supervisor. Um, it's from a couple of days back, uh, stating about the overtime as well, and speaking with Eddie again. So similar things. He's just trying to keep us in the loop. It sounds like. I talked with him. He wasn't sure about Eddie. I talked with him uh, this week, earlier this week. And, yeah. Uh, the problem is uh, with the weather holding as it, as it is. It's the paving company still working. He's uh, still enjoying the uh, paving job. Okay. A request from the police department also came in to include funding from 2022 for tuition reimbursement for Jason Patton's four courses. Um, I, I have read this request. Have you guys taken that up? That is typical that they ask for um, tuition reimbursement so that we can fund it accordingly based on our personnel policy. Just out of curiosity, if they get a failing grade after we pay the tuition, do they uh, do we have any recourse to recoup it? They have to get a C. Yeah, C, C or better. better. Okay, that, I, I thought there was something in there. Okay, yeah. thank you. So. Just for the board's knowledge, um, soon to be Sergeant Tyler recently finishes a uh, bachelor's degree. Yes. Um, so we're extremely proud of him, and uh, there won't be any further reimbursement requests from him uh, related to that. So this is kind of a swap, and I believe this this program is actually cheaper than. Okay, that's some kudos to it. Yeah, abs absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, I did send them up. Thumbs up and CC you. Yeah, thank notes. you very much. It's nice to see them using that stuff. Okay, um, again, we did get an email from the transfer station uh, supervisor showing us the pictures of the lift gate. Also in here, he said he had been in touch with the factory rep, and the factory rep was not very happy that we were treated the way we were on the lift gate and asked us not to pay the bill until he has a resolution with that company. So um, it looks like maybe the lift gate company will be helping us out with this. We should uh, make sure that we have a good documentation of that saved because illegally, uh, I don't want to get hot water because it will Just send a courtesy email back to the company saying we're deferring payment based on uh, recommendation of your service rep, so they know that they got to communicate. Uh, I, I just don't. I would say the lift gate fa factory rep, you know, just like you ordered it in here. Let the <clears throat> company we did business with know that we're working with the factory. Yeah. Update. To find resolution for the okay. issue. Okay. Okay. Just you know, keep everyone informed of what's going on. Sure. Because yeah. it, I don't want to yeah. be considered a dumb bird and be a bunch of deadbeats. We don't pay our bills. Right. Okay. We have an email recognition from Christopher Rumbly regarding Officer Tyler completing his Bachelor of Arts, being in criminal justice. Thank you for sending this update to us. Oh, of course. With the photo. Yes, I do include the photo. Yeah. He looks super short, doesn't he? Keep giving him a hard time. Oh, <laughs> oh was the angle I took the picture at? Tell him the car looks tall. Yeah. <laughs> we have an update from FMLA showing us report. for annual leave from a town official. This was signed when I come in to sign the rest of the checks of the town. And uh, that's approved. A few days off, well needed. We also have another email here from the transfer station superintendent with some items he requested. Uh, some information from timesheets, travel allowance policy, and some non-public meetings, minutes with a former employee. Those have all been CC and copied to him. And it looks like some of those requests were varied throughout different times of the year. 
and uh, we've sent him an email to ask him to try and if he doesn't get something and doesn't think it's timely, just to ask his supervisor to send it again. And, you know, occasionally emails get sent to spam and lost, and a little conversation goes over a long ways. Nothing like a phone call to take care of that stuff. You know, that's an interesting piece of technology. You can actually put some numbers in. Yeah. You got, and hear someone's voice. Only if you dial 603 now, which is oh, a very cool. And one sometimes one. one. Yeah. One's the wild card. Yeah. Okay, that's it in the mailbox. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming in. Thanks. Did the questions. board have any questions or concerns about the tuition reimbursement okay. request for us? No. no. Okay. In fact, uh, I'm happy he's taking it. Yeah, just it. So I can uh, pass that along to him. That that's, yes. Yep. That's awesome. up. Okay. I'll say it. I've already put it to work. Beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, thank you. See you all. Here. All right. Thank you. Have, have a good holiday. Thank you. You as well. Take care, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Three days. One for the week. Okay. I'll say it. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Okay. I'm going to open this up to the um, public comment. You know, I do. You mentioned Mary Gerard. So it popped into my mind. Uh, last meeting. The trustees or Mary, I think, might could request that they come in to talk about their hours of operation and what they're doing there so that we're aware of it. Well, um, it's been brought to my attention by the PHAC, and I noticed it after we were, after it was brought to my attention. The, uh, the history room is not accessible. Now, that room has got a lot of work has gone into that. Still a lot of work going on, and they, they can't even get in to put more, more than I didn't realize that. I went through the building, Leo, but I went through other parts of the building. Yeah, right. well, the I mean, it's something that you might not know, notice, that's all. You know? But I, I know that, uh, you know, even in the entryway, I, as you've seen, I've brought that up before, and I want that stuff out of there, too, you know. There's a lot of old spots in that building that are being piled up with stuff. Right. We either need yeah. to find a new home, a correct home, or something. Right, and um, maybe things need to be purged, you know? Uh, there's a lot of, I don't know what all those books are in that uh, and empty room. Where all those books are piled up on top of those map uh, drawers and everything, you know? But, um, the, the, and I understand what's in that room may be useful to her. I'm not saying it's garbage by any means, but can't she put that somewhere else? To make that room accessible, because right now, if I wanted to use that room, I couldn't use it. Okay. Nobody can. You can't even put a foot in the door. And Bob worked a lot of hours putting that room together. And then the DHAC, you know, has been uh, installing all of this information, and it's not accessible. Didn't Bob know that when he put that room down, he has to clean it? <laughs> um, it's okay. He's right in the back of the pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> Now when she comes in front, yeah. make sure. Okay, just the I was asked to make yeah. a point to speak to her that. Okay. And um, I, they want, they're not here tonight, so just in case that I'm not around or you know, it's forgotten, that that would be a real line of uh, help to the uh, DHAC. You know. Did we ever reach out for them? We did. Okay. And I think it's insulting that we're blown off by the uh, library trustees to show up a month later after we asked them to come in tonight. So I'm a little bit... Uh, um, is that a month late or was it last week? No, they're gonna, that's, that's when they're going to come in, a month from now. They're scheduled for their budget discussion on December 16th, and when I reread my email asking her to ask them to come in, it, I think I, I read it to you. It was clear that I asked them, that I said the board would like to meet with the, the trustees because they haven't seen them all summer. Um, and then... She didn't confuse that with the budget thing, did she? I had that on a separate email, so I think she did, and she kind of put the two together. Okay. Might be, might be wise to let them know that you're issue they might be like the yeah, She may not have done it. Okay. <clears throat> well, I think it's the impression we're getting. You can articulate this, that we're getting blown off. No, we're not going to Okay. But 
tell me. Right. There, there are issues that you want to wait. Right. There, there are issues that I don't, I, I don't want to wait to the uh, uh, budget yeah. because in budget season we're talking numbers. We're not talking policy, and uh, okay. I don't want to talk policy in the middle of a budget season. Okay, got it. Although you may, but we may. Right. At so this point, point, we this point <laughs> we don't meet next Thursday, so it'll be the following week at the earliest, the second. They're, they're essentially, they're putting a, they're turning me a little sour towards the way they're handling it. I just, I'm turning a little sour, that's all. Not emotional, but just a little sour. Does anybody know this men's coffee moved into the front corner today by the entry, or are they just not there? I, I know they have gone for a while, so I don't think they're meeting only because it would be outside. Yeah. And they had some cold Fridays, so. Okay. Right. And again, you, you, you know, the email says uh, meet outdoors. of how we're handling COVID in the library, contrary to science, contrary to how the governor handles it, contrary to how the state handles it, and let alone how we handle it. And five people in the library, I've said this before, mask on, give me a break. That's all I'm gonna say. There's no definition for that next week. People go grocery shopping <laughs> before they mask. They still go, yeah. Okay, enough Thank said, we'll move on to the next subject. Uh, bringing it back to the town administrator, do you have anything for us this week? Um, no, no, uh, right now, um, next, next meeting, I will have the meeting um, countdown for our town meeting and uh, calendars and a lot of other events, but I have scheduled all the permits to be heard uh, before the board um, prior to the end of the year. Um, I will send them out a reminder that if they have any encumbrances that they need to consider before the end of the year that they should also bring those before the board to approve uh, as that was brought to my attention by the um, auditor that that's something that's important that the board is aware of. It's good to see these new auditors picking up on some small items like that that yep. you know are protocols that we should be doing that may not have been done in previous years that we can better ourselves at. Absolutely. I like to see that so yep. we're doing things right. They're very positive and they're very helpful so good. it's a really positive Um, I'd like to bring it back to you. Okay, uh, three items you already talked about the library, so thank okay. you. Um, an energy committee met this week, and um, one thing that came up is a lot of publicity about the fuel assistance program this year. It's up to $1,700 for those in need. I'd like to have permission from the board to put that on hot topics and then have a link going to it, uh, the energy website where we can just basically kind of repackage some of the information that's on the state website. I think just that more people know about it, the better. I have no problem with that. The other thing, uh, the energy committee, we're looking at some uh, some sites in town where we could put up more energy panels that would offset the school, because the school is probably uh, uses more electricity than all other departments together in this town. And one of the things we're going to be looking at is the uh, the piece of property managed by the KFC. You know, I think you, you got to help me with the words, David. You were Can supposed to. Town forest. Town forest. Town forest. It's uh, across from Donna Dunn's uh, home. There's an open field there. You know, there'll be no tree removal. It's kind of in the spirit of things because it's using green and making it green, using it in nature to help offset the cost of nothing. I don't think that they, um, the way that that was given to the town, I don't think that's something that's going to be allowed to be well, I want to, I thought it'd be worthwhile at least to look at the, um, because that property is, is exclusively, not exclusively, but is conducive to having good solar power on there. So we're thinking about that. At least looking at the options. So that's the report from the energy committee. And lastly, the board of selectmen here for the last several years have worked so hard to keep town common a presentable town common. And I've already corrected the uh, uh, a certain individual before when he put too many signs without permission. We have two new signs up there, and they did not come before this board to, for permission to put signs on the uh, on the uh, uh, town common. Uh, there, reach across town burn. I love the program, but I think the more appropriate place for the signs would be in front of, a, in front of the cemetery one and two, not on our town common. And the thing is, remember that when the, when the coffee shop opened up, we, we gave them a hard time 
of how they, they would ask, but they could only have an open during, during operating hours, and then when the, 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 uh, the, uh, the store over there, when they sell stuff, they could have a sign on the common, only when they're open, they have to take it down. This gentleman didn't even come to us and ask us for permission. Just puts them out there. That's disrespectful. I won't say I, I won't say anything about this year because obviously he didn't ask to live here. In prior years, he did talk about moving them to different corners of town, uh, different roadways, to make sure that everybody got a chance to see them. Right. But um, he didn't come to us for the town common. There are three. There are three appropriate cemeteries to get, get them out of the town home, and I'd recommend immediate removal of equipment from the cemeteries. Yeah. I think it's him being part of the cemetery. Don't uh, watch. I'm talking about for the record. Those, uh, those had been in front of the cemetery, I know, because I've seen them. Yeah. But they, I think he's trying to move to get people on different roads. Well, we require permission for anything that goes on the common. That's the bottom line. Yeah, it should, I, you know, I guess I'll give you a little support. If you're going to have it on the common, they should be coming to see us and ask us, you know, or tell us a length of time. But the other thing that I noticed is a sign on where the Minuteman is, and we've discouraged anyone from putting them there, so it's not a distraction when people are driving around it. So to put something there and pull somebody's eyes away, I don't think is a good practice. Why don't we send them an email and ask them to come in on the second and we'll uh, I, Dave, talk I, about Dave, I don't think we should wait to them. I think we should just ask them to be removed and replaced in an appropriate. There's three locations in town that can easily be acceptable: Cemetery One, Cemetery Two, Cemetery Three. Simple, simple as that. I don't think we should wait. They have more signs than that, I can tell you. No, but the thing is, not <laughs> in the comments. I'm talking about the ones in the comments. No, I, I know. Yeah. They do have more signs. Oh, absolutely. Than absolutely. They're on Blackbrook Road. They're everywhere. Well, no, those are for the, ups, no, the uh, restoration. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, if, if, they look alike. if you well, think they about they it, they, they, have, they, they have signs on private property, which might be an alternative, you know, just to find people mm -hmm. nearby. I don't mind having the sign up. Yeah. You guys don't remember last year you went through the same thing and you told me to move them and you moved them in front of the cemetery. I know we moved in front of this building yeah, last year. Yeah, the cemetery. Yeah. yeah. But the other thing is, what happens this past Saturday when the Boy Scouts were here and we came out here to bring food, they couldn't put the signs up too then. And then anybody can be putting signs up, and next thing you know, this whole place is all covered in signs. And your policy was no signage on the town common. And when it usually, my attitude is, when you make a rule, that's the rule. Yeah. You know, if you bend, you gotta bend for everybody, and it opens the door. As I said, you could have had four signs on here not counting the, the town hall rest last Saturday because the Boy Scouts could have put something up. The same thing, they can put big signs up like that. Yeah. And it gets to a point where, and again, I talk to a lot of people, and nobody even reads those signs anymore. Yeah. They all assume you just did. They all assume they're the same thing. Yeah. Um, well, I guess have them come in anyway on the second, so we discuss it. But ask them to remove the signs on the just the ones on the common and put them in front of the cemetery if they can. Are we on the census? Because we've been discouraging, discouraging anyone from putting any signs in. I mean, it's pretty uncomfortable, right here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just got permission with the flags. <laughs> you didn't see my name in small writing on the flags. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a hanging under me. All right, Mike's that good for you. That's what you're going to do for me. All right, Bob. Yeah, I am I, I'm a little concerned because I read those emails that we're getting from the transfer station. And I read how I have to work these many hours this week. And, you know, and we're only finding out about it mostly in the middle of the week when some of the hours are work. Yeah. So either you plan your work or, you know, but I, and I know the guys have worked as many hours as they wanted. And I'd like to see an ad go out to advertise because i got to tell you, if the weather hangs around in the 40s, you can pay until Christmas. Right. And you have nobody working, and you're going to have the same excuse. And uh, granted that he's working the overtime, but he's also piling up a lot of comp time. And you're either going to have to pay it all out, or you're going to have to ask him to take some time off 
And so I, because I looked at that number, that was at least a few hours in. Yep. So I, I think we should put an ad and get someone to come in, because you're probably going to find that those guys don't want to work that many hours either. But they're working them because, you know, that, that's what they have to do to get by. And I did post on NHMA, but that's not as accurate. Do you want to do it? You didn't do Hampshire and Municipal. Yeah. You don't do the paper anymore. You did the town website. Yeah. Put in hot topics. You know, you get someone in semi retiring wants to do put a few hours in there. Yeah. Well. But do you what's, want to do Indeed or do you guys want to skip yeah, Indeed? No, Indeed? No, no, I don't think I don't know because I keep getting a coupon from Indeed to give me seventy five dollars off I my first ad, yeah. and all I'm going there for is to get information. Well, there you go. Put it in. What's the, the charge to have it in It's a per day and um, it, it We get about seventy five dollars is what it generally runs for you or something. No, uh, there were three months in a row and they were over two hundred dollars a month. Almost that much. Yeah. Why don't we run it for a month? Yeah, three? run it for I think we should run it for a month. I mean if we get a, another body because we don't know what'll happen. Don't Even do the assist of just a regular part time yeah. transfer station. Because even if even if Eddie does come back down the road, these guys may not want to work that many hours either. Absolutely. They're kind of forced to yep. work those hours because that's the conditions they're under. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Paul? Uh, no, I'll let that. That's some okay. I'll let Woody know that I'll be advertising for 30 days. Yeah. Yeah, and I see if he has a sign up down there. I think he does, yes. As I could. Did I, I miss something in the email board? Yeah, I think you did. I, I'm not sure. I, I, there's a lot of emails. I, 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 I can bring it out. I don't have a problem doing that. Well, I have but, one. Yeah, well, no. I, well, you should have seen that one then. That he has oh, one yeah. other guys that stepped up and he'd like to increase, bring them to the next step. Is that, Was that today? No, that's this week. Oh, so that might be the Tuesday one? Because I don't recall. Because I read them, I didn't see anything in there. So you have it because she, she didn't get the one that we got the last time, right? Right. Till I gave her a copy of it. So I, but I, my I point, wasn't ready for asking, but I agree with you, Bob. That's what he was hiring. My point is that you go to work to do a job. Now you get some people that don't work as fast, so the strong carry the weak as far as I'm concerned. That person that doesn't go as fast is probably doing as much as they can do, and the other person does a little more. It evens off, so I mean, it's quite a long. It's you know, better than any of these three. I don't. I one of the things we talked about earlier, though, if there was an outstanding employee who's working hard, yeah, you nice, nice to give a raise if you could, but we have a plan for that. But the thing is, we talked about bonuses before. How do you recognize employees doing a good job? We said maybe we could institute a bonus. I give a bonus for doing a good job, like a pat on the back. Yeah, How about a just an employee? Yeah. Not, not too much too. That was a six-month sign-on. Yeah, well, I haven't seen that email. Can you see CS on it? Yeah, I can. I because I can, I keep all the emails. So. Yeah, I have these three that are in here, but I haven't seen any other emails. Well, but the thing is, um, I don't mind Woody asking for it, but he's got to be comfortable with the word no. But Woody's got to be careful not to promise anything up front because he's going to uh, disenfranchise any employee. That's that's the bottom line there. Because you know. I think in the past it may have happened there where, you know, I think Eddie may have thought he was getting a big huge raise and he never got it and that may have made him a little bit sour on um, on staying around. Okay. So I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> All right. I have only one thing here. Um, Bob and I this week were at the uh, Veterans Day ceremony at Bovlin and um, we accepted those flags for Dunbar, the 38 flags of the amount of 4,000 which we had our last meeting. And during that ceremony, I forgot to thank the telephone company
for their services and putting those onto the poles and taking them down, which is the lion's share of the work now that we have your flag. So I'd like to send a letter from the select and thanking the telephone company and their employees for their due diligence and work and doing that for the town of Dunbar. I think it goes a long way. Of, there's a lot of flags. You look down the road there. When you coming down? I don't Today. 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 Should have seen my great granddaughter when they fired the muskets. <laughs> she was a little surprised. Then she had her hands over her ears. <laughs> so, Nate, if you have uh, uh, re signed checks next week, we'll just I will get that for you. You can uh, sign it up then, and then we can send it out. But that's all I had. Thank you, guys. Nothing exciting with planning board? Nope. We had a, a continuance on one. And Kyle Hill had uh, a cons uh, conceptual on eight more lots on the left hand side.